first video we're going to create our ground. We're going to use a grid and sculpture roughly the shape we want and use noise, amount of noise to add details. And also create the material for that. So let's check it out. So let's get starting with our ground and the base primitive is going to be a grid, perfect for a ground of course. So let's name it properly, dive in. And right now they are 10 by 10, that means 10 meters by 10 meters, not, not big for a landscape. So let's change this for 100 by 100. And our first step here is just create the, the overall shape. And so we can just increase the resolution for 100 by 100, so it'd be one unit per meter. It's not a whole lot. Sure, it's enough for us to give the overall shape. And we're going to do this using a sculpt. So let's connect here, a sculpt node. And how this work being is very straightforward. What we want to do is a displace points. So it's the form points, you're pushing those points. And we can pick the amount we are pushing per stroke. So we want to displace a meter, so it'll be a one unit here. But one important thing you see is which direction you're going to do it. So right now it's point to the normal. So it's going to push the face up in the direction of normal. But of course, as you're doing this, the normals will start to change direction because it becomes sideways. So you can see here, as soon as you push the point upward, those normal change direction, and now your stroke will be pushing on that direction, following the normals. And I'm sure there's plenty of times we want that result. But for here, we want them to be always pointing up. So that means, let's clean this view, we're going to push this on the Y axis. So that would be consistent. And here in the brush, we have this, the settings. So, of course, I have the radius of the of brush. That also we can use the mid button mouse uh, to, to increase. As well as on the top view, you're going to see we have the radius there as well. So, we can change the value there on the top. as well also the amount of displays we want. So let's try it. Increase a little bit here and start blocking how you want this. So you're gonna notice here as I press and move along, as I keep one stroke, it will not add to the what I have uh, already set. It's not adding more one meter until I release and press again. And that is a good thing, you can have control overall. And if you don't want to worry about it, you can go and check in Accumulate to Stencil. And that will keep your stroke, even if you're releasing, the pressing. And you just need to go and unclean the stencil after. So see, no matter if you're pressing, releasing, we always keep this value until you go back there and apply or clean stencil and then start adding a new one or you can just check out depending on how you want to do it but it's good to give this option so what we want to do here is just a rough blocking of our shore so we create this little ramp in front of the water level a little elevation and just create a little variety. And don't worry, now, now, don't worry, right now it looks very blobby and uh, round. But we're going to add more detail to break the silhouette and make it really look like a ground. Yeah. Let's put 0.5, should be enough, and we can add as we stroke on the top. You see, roughly, we start adding uh, those things. We can uh, start shaping overall how I want. There, we can just push this will be on the water, so it should not work too much. Okay, I think it's uh, that's kind of the camera angle. We can try to see which, which angle we're gonna see in our camera. 
um, and we turn on the lighting with more detail so we can have better feel of the, the shapes. Nice, I'm pretty happy with this, although it does look like a blob, it doesn't look like a terrain at all. Um, so now we can add more detail with the noise. And for that, we're going to need to do it in two steps. Let's break a little bit the silhouette uh, with a rough, big size element. And after that, we can add a fine on the top. But let's subdivide this so we have more information to work with. And that will give more points so we can move around. That really gonna break the silhouette of this more blob round shape that we create with the sculpture. And on top of that, we can add a second uh, mountain to add a more fine noise that definitely will give you more this ground look. And we're gonna adjust here the parameters, element size, and push the heights. And, and just get a general feel of it. You can play with those values for your taste and uh, wherever you think is the best. where I think it gives you the, the feel more terrain. I feel pretty happy with this. Of course, me, we can spend eternity here playing around with those uh, attributes, those parameters. Um, but probably you would not be watching this for eternity, so it's better being stopping right here and move on. It's nice, it does look... And remember, we're covering all of this with rocks later on, so we should not be too concerned that's just a base. Of course, we're going to see the ground picking out here and there. And the skipping organizer, once again, I, I put it as no nodes as an output. So if later on I want to add anything here on the chain, uh, we'll also be pointing to that node. And also because I can't help myself, let color just black. Otherwise, I cannot sleep at night in peace, knowing that the out node is not black. And we're going to apply a texture there, so we want to make sure we have a UV. So right now, we have no UV at all. Of course, the best place to organize a UV is right when the ground, the grid is just flat. So let's pre project UV. That should give us a... Yeah, so we have the projecting UV there. That just for checking, it's fun. Those uh, quick, quick shader. Yeah, so those are always fun, and we can just check on the side. Yeah, so it looks flipped. It's not a big of a deal here because I guess we're not writing anything on the ground. So let's flip it, just put a negative value there on the scale, and now we're all good to go beautifully. So we start to create our material here. And I like to organize everything inside the node itself, the geo node, the sub node. That makes it easy if you have to export, everything is there. Of course, it's a personal choice. Feel free to do whatever you want, wherever please your heart. Um, not dogmatic about this. So use the principal shader. I'm using Mantra here, but uh, you can use any render. And I'm not plugging in a color map for the base color. Keep it neat organized with the right name. And after that, we, we can also can plug a normal map it's always going to help us to add more detail. And you know all about that. But I have to say something while I'm doing. 
So let's connect our material with our geo using this material node here. And what we want is we're going to use that geo later on to place the rocks. So we don't want materials as we reference this object. So let's create another node and let's put a flag this for a render. So this will only show during render time. And of course, properly name it is render. So we know that this is output only shown in render time. And we connect, we reference here our material that we just created. And we're there, let's render and see how it looks. It doesn't look like the way we want. And let's see why. Let's go back to the material. And the first thing is let's reduce this for 25, for example. So we don't want, we have a big ground and we have a lot to cover with this. So let's make some tiling. Here will be like four tiling. And also let's put a color correction and adjust the gamma value. So let's put this point 42, 42. And let's render again and see how it looks. It's much better. It's definitely much better. Look like something like a ground. A wet ground, but because of the roughness. But definitely in the right path. So I turn out the the roughness a little bit just for now. So just our roughness here, just for now. So you get a feel. Everything seems to be just right. It does look like a dirt. Um, I definitely like the result, especially because we're going to hide the majority of this with rocks on top. But let's make it just smaller, just because uh, we're not seeing the whole thing together. So we're getting more information, you know, pixel wise density. We need to make it a uh, uh, repetition, a tiling uh, 10 by 10. It feels like it's a lot of repetition, but it, it will want to work out pretty good. If it were render right now, let's see how it looks. Yeah, it does look much better. You know, it seems to have more detail. Let's plug the roughness map that you add more variety to the roughness, a nice touch better than a constant. Nice and also add a displacement, the final touch, the final extra detail. So it breaks even more the silhouette with a fine detail. And uh, with that, we conclude our ground and we'll be ready for create some rocks and later on place this on the ground and all the fun that will come later on. Well, thanks very much for watching. Uh, Hope to see you in the next, you know, the following videos. Take care and uh, see you soon.